I said to you my favourite story in the book is <laughs> when Roy Keane comes in. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, with yeah, all sat, sitting in there. Like, tell us that story because <laughs> I love the fact that, like you say, you're a shy kid, you you don't make a fuss, you've got the reputation, you beat that horrible term, you're busy because you're yeah. staying behind doing extras, your dad's helping you with it. And then Roy Keane comes in. Tell us the story because I think people yeah. will love that. So we had a game. Um, it was a friendly. It was a friendly game. Uh, Sunderland um, under twenty ones or twenty threes at the time. Uh, we at the Gateshead, which isn't far, um, half an hour or so from Sunderland. Um, so we had a game at Gateshead. wasn't great at all. Didn't play very well as a team. I think I don't even think Roy went to the game. I think it was his staff that went to the game. And yeah, really bad day. Let's put it that way. But. Anyway, we're so getting the coach back to the training ground from, from Gateshead. And while we're on the coach, our coach has come to us and said, everybody's got to go into the training ground when we get there because the gaffer's coming in, Roy, to, to see us. Well, everyone's face just went white. Um, Remind us how old you are at the time. Must have been 18. Um, yeah, 17, 18, I, w- I would say. And anyway, we all go... We all go into the training ground and we're sort of waiting in this room. And um <laughs> and Roy comes in and says, Well, basically like sort of scattered around the room. And he sort of starts off with something like along the lines of I'm not allowed to swear on this, am I? No, no, go on. Do you I can't. Can. He said <laughs> he said uh, he said, This sums you lot up. Here you there, get together scurrying together and we're all like in like half a semicircle and he's at the front and like literally he just goes like around everyone individually like around like I think somebody had just signed and said like we've just paid whatever for you and who do you think you are and blah 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 going around and talking about like the game not good enough and basically went round and it was, it was heated and I'm just standing there like thinking if he comes to me I'm just was just dripping with sweat but um, anyway, he gets to me and sort of just like looks at us and says, do you think you could play in the first team? And just me respond, I don't know how or why, I mean, his response was just like, yeah. And he went, good. Because the staff said, you were the only one that was running around or something along them lines. And then he moved on and I'm like, thank God for that. I can relax a little bit now, but... Um, it was it was intense, you know, and and, and I suppose in that moment I, I didn't know why, I, you know. Normally I would I would maybe have, but I was self belief, just yeah, I yeah, do. Because you describe yourself as being lucky, but like that definition of lucky is when opportunity meets preparation, and that to me in the story was that's your opportunity, but you but you back yourself, and that's the bit that really stood out for me. Yeah, I would always I would always back myself. But I was, I would always back myself inside. I never really seen the point of coming out and backing myself and speaking and talking and telling people about backing myself. I never really felt that was felt. What? Why? I, I'll just sort of do me talking on the pitch. Is so how tell I see. How you develop that then? Because I'm interested in the stuff that goes on. So, if I'm a coach at Sunderland, I'm seeing this really quiet lad that's coming in and just getting on with the job and you're running around even, you're not being dragged down to the level of what everybody else seems to be descending to. What is it you've done that people listening to this could go, I wouldn't have that quiet resolve, that inner steel to be able to stand up. So what were the kind of techniques and tips that you could pass on to build that sense of confidence to back yourself? Honest, Honestly, looking back, to certain things I don't I actually don't know there's the honest answer like I just did it and the only thing I can probably think of is I felt as though I was always the one that people never backed I was always the one that was maybe second best or people never thought I'd make it they always thought somebody else like one of my friends would make it because he was better or if it was like player of the year, yeah, I'd, I'd maybe win it, but joint with somebody else when I was really young. So I, I always felt people would would never want to, would never back me. And that, I suppose, then brought like an, an anger inside. So when I played, 
I sort of let that anger go. And I, I still now I'm quite emotional when I play. And, and I was like that when I was a kid, you know, I was so emotional when I played because I used all of that negativity and that anger from people doubting us when I was younger to when I was on the pitch. I just, I just used that as, as, as me sort of fuel, me fuel really, yeah, to, to just really prove people wrong. And, and, and I suppose that's in a way, that's where the, the self-belief comes in, you know, cause it's like, all right, well, you're doubting us and, and you're doubting us and oh, he's doubting us. And there's that many people, you know, that, that I felt would doubt us and it would be everywhere really, whether I was in school, whether I was at the academy at Sunderland, I just always felt as though there'd be somebody that would, would be doubting. And, um, and then I'd take that sort of personally to, to sort of prove them wrong. And that's where. And would you take it off once you'd proved them wrong? It was like next. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tick it off because I never felt as though there was a point where I'd be like, I've proved you wrong. You know, so, so for, for, for surely when you're lifting a Champions League trophy or a Premier League trophy, may, maybe I'd say the Champions League trophy was the moment that changed everything that I'd ever been searching for um, and wanting my whole life for that moment to come. Um, and everything that went, th what I went through to get to there. Um, and Tell what us more about that. You said that winning the Champions League, lifting that trophy changed everything. Yeah. Just a quick one to say thank you so much for watching this content on the High Performance channel. We would love it if you would subscribe. You know, most people that watch what we do don't subscribe. If you can subscribe, we can make this bigger, better, bolder than we've ever done before. So hit subscribe right now and help the High Performance podcast make a real difference to the world. See you soon.